Hey guys, I just wanted to make one quick announcement before we get into the video about my Patreon. So in the Patreon, what you get is you get ex exclusive access to all of the posts that I will be putting up there, as well as early access to future content. But most importantly, you get access to our Discord server. And this is something that I'm very excited about that my friends and I have been working on for the past couple weeks putting together. Being able to do this stuff wouldn't be possible without you. And if we get enough patrons on the Patreon, you guys can hold me to this one. I will buy a plane ticket and I will fly all the way to Japan to create more auction car content. So if you guys are interested, I'll make sure to have that all linked down below. But I think with that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Now today, what we're gonna be working on is my 1997 Subaru Impreza, also known as the Battle Wagon. And if you guys haven't seen the five gazillion videos that I've done on this car, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description as well as leave a link above. But anyways, getting back to this car, where we left off is this car actually got stolen from me. So unfortunately I found it abandoned in a mall parking lot and the cops were able to find it a few days later. I parked it and just made sure that we were able to get it home. Uh, it did have a flat tire along with some other things wrong with it. So today I brought all my tools and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm gonna be working on today. So the first things first is I went out and I got a fresh winter tire. Now the reason that I'm running winter tires is of course we're going into the colder season months, but I primarily use this car actually for rallycross. Now my friends and I, we participate in some uh, rallycross events and we have a winter rally series coming up that's being hosted by the Northwest Rally Association. So my plan was to take this car out, then the car got stolen and I was kind of panicking and freaking out what I was gonna do. But anyways, what you typically wanna do if you're running in the stock class is you cannot run any sort of uh, gravel or rally tire. So the best alternative is to run some winners. Now, typically if you have a flat, on a Subaru, you actually wanna replace all four corners when it comes to the tires. But the reason that I'm able to get away with putting a brand new tire on is because of the condition of these. And they came out to be, I think within like two thirty seconds of a inch, centimeter? I, I forgot the measurement that was used. But they were close enough to where you can put this on and it won't damage anything in the center diff because if you have flat tires, for example, or tires that are really worn, and you put on a brand new tire, it will cause an imbalance in the center diff because of the symmetrical all-wheel drive, and it could cause issues down the road with you with your center diff on these old Subarus, or any Subaru for that fact of the matter. So that's one thing that we're gonna do today. And the other thing is the brakes are absolutely cooked. Luckily, they didn't do anything in terms of body damage. The brake fluid reservoir was really, really, really low. Fingers crossed that there isn't any air in the brake lines or else we'll have to bleed the brakes and that can just be very tedious and take forever. I cleaned out the interior and I found some very concerning things that were in the car. See, this is why I put gloves on. This is what I found underneath the seat. This is the stuff that you don't wanna be finding in your car after it gets stolen. So you wanna be very, 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 very careful and I cleaned the whole interior out. It's not like super perfect, as you can see, there's like stains in the seats and stuff like that. But since I'm just gonna be using this thing for rally cross, I'm not too concerned about that. They just kind of made a huge mess of it. And all this stuff can come out, and I mean, I, I've done a lot worse, and that's not too big of a deal. I'm just really grateful, though, that the car just fires right up. I mean, listen to this thing. It's truly unbelievable. I mean, come on. <laughs> even after being tortured by those stupid thieves. I do need to replace the, the windshield at some point in time. And the thing is, I really do love this car. Don't get me wrong. But the thing is, for me to continue all the auction car content that I'm currently doing, I think I need to eventually make some room. So I think what my plan is after the Winter Rally series is that I'm gonna put this car up for sale. And if I'm being honest here, this may be one of the best daily drivers that I've ever owned. And it has such a cool story. I think I can't hold on to this thing forever. Like, I wish I had a warehouse where I could just like, stash this thing and, and feel really good about just like bringing it out 10 years later. But it's just one of those things where it doesn't get driven as much as I would like. I'm just concerned about it getting stolen now. And I think that just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, you know? Like I, I really don't want to deal with having to see this car get stolen again or have to deal with all that. So I'm probably gonna put it up for sale, see what happens, see if anybody wants this thing. Or if I were to keep it, probably the next thing I would do is a manual swap. That's just kind of where things are at with this car. So my plan is just to basically work on the car today. All 
All right, so here's a quick look at the tire. This is a Bridgestone Blizzak. I actually love these tires. These are awesome in the snow. As soon as I got the car back, one of the first things that I went out and got was some brand new wheel locks. Now, it was definitely a mistake on my part to not be running wheel locks on this car, but I honestly thought that I lived in a relatively safe neighborhood and there wasn't any like car thefts or anything before mine. So it's very unfortunate that it comes to that point, but I think this is gonna be a really good lesson for me to know down the road that I should always be running on these things if I'm gonna be running some uh, sort of desirable wheel in any case, because if I'm being honest, the wheels are probably worth more than the entire car itself. It's really a shame that it has to come to that point. And I've also equipped this car with some GPS. So it has some GPS tracking, and of course I'm not gonna disclose how that's all set up, but just know if anybody ever takes this car in the future that they're gonna be tracked. It's always a good idea to stuff at least one wheel and tire underneath the car, just to give you some more preventative uh, safety when it comes to having this car up on jack stands. I know I'm not going to be crawling underneath the car today, but it's always a good idea just for your own peace of mind. There you go. A little thing I like to do before getting started just to make my life a little bit easier is I'm just going to spray a little bit of PB Blast where I'm going to be taking off bolts. You don't have to do this, but for me and my experience, it helps a lot to just make things go quicker. Okay, now that I officially have the car up in the air, I wanted to show you what I, what I got for the car so that we can replace the rotors and the pads. So when it comes to brake rotors, uh, since this is just like an economy car, no real serious modifications, I just got something that's close to OEM spec. The biggest thing we always want to look for in brake rotors is that just they're the right diameter. So what I'll do next is I'll just check to see if these are the right size. These I bought off of Parts Geek. And the thing that is kind of like a rule of thumb with me when it comes to buying brake rotors is you don't always want to go for the absolute cheapest thing. So this was something that was kind of in the middle of uh, higher end and cheap. So it's just something that's going to be reliable, that's going to work, or at least I hope. And uh, it does look like it got a little bit soaked by moisture or for whatever reason, when these people stole the car, I don't know if they like kept the windows open uh, when they abandoned it or something like that, but there's just quite a bit of stuff in the car that's just moist and it's, it's pretty gross. So as you can see, I'm wearing gloves. Now the pads that I went with are the EBC green stuff brake pads. Now I'm a big fan of these on just like an economy car. And since again, since I'm not doing any crazy modifications to this car and I'm not tracking it for hours on end and I'm just doing like time lapse in a rally cross situation, I think these are gonna be more than adequate to get the job done. Now, if I really wanted to, I could have gone out and I got the, the yellow stuff and the red stuff pads that are also made by EBC. But in terms of performance brake pads, I think these are gonna get the job done. Now these are just kind of the little uh, cage that goes inside when you put these against the caliper. So it's kind of nice that they threw that in. I also got some, uh, just a little bit of brake grease that I was laying around. I'm probably just gonna put this on the back of the pads just to make sure that it goes smoothly against the calipers. So yeah, let's get to work. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's up? You can see on the other side how cooked the brakes are. All right, so I took off the brake pads. There's actually some life in them. I was genuinely surprised. I thought they were gonna be much thinner than this, but uh, just for the sake of doing this and getting it out of the way, because I know these have been here since I've owned the car, I'm just gonna do them anyways. One piece of advice for anybody that's looking to do their brakes, always make sure that this line has slack in it. It's not, you know, maybe you need to use a bungee cord like I was earlier, but luckily I was able to just kind of stash it away over here because if you put pressure on this line and it breaks, you're gonna break fluid all over the place and it's it's not fun. Another thing you always wanna look at is you wanna look at these sliding pins to make sure that they move up and down and they have some play because it's pretty common on old cars for these to get stuck and then you have to replace them. But luckily I checked these and they looked okay. <laughs> If you need to compress the piston and the caliper, what you can do is you can use an old pad and then a C-clamp and you will basically align this here so that it pushes it all the way back so that you get it flat and seated like it is right now so that I'm able to put this over the new pads. And 
since this Subaru is on Forester struts, there's actually no way to secure the brake line. So I'm gonna do this to tastefully clapped way and do it with a good old zip tie. Perfection. These brakes are cooked. Holy moly. Look at that. <laughs> Nothing left. So I got the rotors and the pads installed on the other side. They look really good. I'm probably gonna spend some time here just tidying things up because I made a mess and make sure that the brake fluid is topped off. Let's check the other side, see how it looks. And yeah, not bad. Not the most high performance brake job in the world, but I'm sure it's gonna make a world of a difference once we get it back on the road. But I think I'm gonna wrap up today's video with that. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.